Oh, oh, there's a bike. Oh, it's locked. Well, I'm in the middle of a dark forest. It's sitting in my Corolla. Who knows what's out there? Which means I think last night it was probably in the, maybe even the 30s. With a kick. All right, back with another adventure. You can see I'm at a little river here. Um, I don't think I'm gonna fish here. Although I'm not gonna lie, if I saw an 18 incher just swimming around in this little pool behind me, probably would have busted out the rod and threw it in here. Um, but anyways, we're going up to a, a lake that I haven't been to in a long time. Uh, my dad took me there one time way back when I was a kid. And uh, I've wanted to go back ever since, but never really got around to doing it until today. I have about another hour and a half drive. And uh, once we get there, we're gonna drop the kayak in, do a little bit of fishing this evening, and then see where this journey takes us. I really wanna catch some of these trout. These trout are not just any other rainbow trout. They're a little bit different. And I'll tell you guys what I mean by that later on in the video. Look at this river though. So I saw a little trout swimming right over here. And then I kind of spooked it when I came up here. So I know there's some fish in here, but I mean, how can there not be? Look at this pristine river, super clear water. I got a feeling like that pool up there, like that little area right there should be a really nice area for a trout to sit. But I can't really get up there unless I go in the water, which I'm tempted to do. Yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's go see what we can find. See how cold we're dealing with here. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty cold. Look at that. So I don't really see much, but I mean, there's got to be fish in there. Probably smaller ones. I don't know. There might be a big one in there too. So trout and especially river trout. Same thing with steelhead and salmon too. Like because they live in such a clear river like this, um, they, their eyesight is really good. And I feel like the reason for that is when the fish are in a river like this, it's so easy for them to get picked off by predators because they're so concentrated in one little area. So they need to have that really good sight to detect predators and swim, swim away from them. But look at that pool. I mean, that's probably like, I'd guess that's at least five feet deep right there in that little spot. There's probably a fish down there somewhere hiding behind those rocks. And I bet there's some in that little, there's a little channel right there. I bet there's fish in there. I can't really see it from here, but anyway. All right, let's get to driving again. We're almost to the lake here, but really quickly before we get started, I just want to thank Catchco for sponsoring today's video. You know, I do a lot of saltwater fishing on my channel and they do have a lot of saltwater gear on their website, shopcarls.com website. But today we're redoing freshwater and almost everything you see in today's video, all the gear we're using, we're gonna, you can find on their on their website. So check them out, I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you to Catch Go for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get fishing. All right, well, we made it out finally. It's about 3.30 right now, um, which is too bad. I was hoping to get on the water by four, which we made it. Didn't take any wrong turns, no major issues, found a boat ramp, and we're out. It seems like a lot of the lakes California right now the hardest part is finding a boat ramp because they're so low the water's so low for this drought and um, yeah a lot of the boat ramps are all the way out of the water so I mean probably more reason to get a kayak because kayaks can get in the water in other ways slide it right off the bank uh, it kind of sucks for boats but anyway we made it out here kind of moving to the other side of the lake actually um, I don't really know where these fish are, but I'm just kind of motoring around now, just kind of exploring, watching the fish finder. I've seen a couple of marks, nothing, no like big schools or anything. I saw one boat come in from this side, and uh, they said they caught a couple of fish, so that's all I have to go off of for now. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to probably get to this side of the lake, kind of troll parallel to the bank. And uh, yeah, that's probably gonna be it. I mean, I don't have a lot of time today. Um, like I said, we're just here in the afternoon. So it's kind of an exploratory mission, but hopefully we can catch some fish. I'm, uh, I'm cautiously optimistic right now.
So if you follow my channel, I mean, the majority of my action is out in the uh, salt water. But I do like coming out to freshwater every once in a while. Not only is it a nice change of pace, but um, also I feel like all the salt just builds up everywhere and all the creases of the kayak. So it's nice to kind of get all that worked out a little bit with all this fresh water. Or at least that's the idea. Besides catching fish, that's another goal for today, is to get all this salt off of here. I mean, everything. My fish finder, my downrigger, my rod holders, the motor, the kayak itself. I mean, the net. Everything has, like, salt buildup in it. So I'm going to start off trolling some Rapalas here. Um, first one I'm going to tie on is this fire tiger color. And then uh, my other rod, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to put uh, more of a natural color. But if you can see the water, it's like really murky and there's like all this, I don't know if it's algae or something, like it's not super clear. So I think this brighter color, or at least my thinking is, brighter color should hopefully stand out a little more. Maybe give those chance, fish a better chance to find it. Fish. Hey, hey, fish on. Taking me a little while, but found one. So we've been on the water for about an hour and a half, actually. So it's definitely not a wide open bite, but but there's some fish out here. Coming up, coming up. Trout? I think it's a trout. Yeah, it's a trout. Oh yeah. Yeah it is. Trying to do all this while keeping my other rod in just just in case there's another one in that school there willing to bite. Oh it's a nice one. Nice fish, nice fish. here at our first fish of this trip. Nice little rainbow trout there. Honestly, this one looks a little beat up. Most of the fish here, or at least the ones that I've caught before, are, are uh, almost like perfect looking. So this one, I don't know, it's been through it. It's got the nice fins, but then it's also got a little beat up there. You can see the fin missing a chunk. Some of the fins are just beat up a little bit. So this one's been through the works, but I'm sure this is gonna be really good here. It's probably like a good 16. 16 inch fish, something like that. Really nice rainbow. And now that I stopped here, I've heard like three or four fish jump on the surface. So anyways, I'm optimistic that there's a few more fish in there, but hey, fish number one. So I caught that one on the trusty fire tiger, which is kind of the one that I had the most confidence going in. So that's good. That builds a little more confidence there. So we're gonna put this back down. I got it 15 feet down on the downrigger. So we're gonna do that exact same thing. And I'm actually stacking both rods. So um, this one will be down maybe about seven or eight feet. All right, so what I got here is I got my two rods stacked on the same downrigger so what that means is i have one that's down deeper that's the one that caught the fish that one's at 15 feet or maybe more like 18 feet and then this one that's the other fish or the other rod that's up a little bit shallower and that one's at about 10 feet that way we can fish two rods on the downrigger with just one downrigger and um, even though we can't do the same depth like if i had two downriggers i'd probably put them both at 15 feet now because we caught that fish at 15 um, but we can at least get them down somewhat close. So I don't know if you can tell from the video, but the air quality up here is not the best. I mean, it's doing okay. I think it's okay, but probably not great if especially you're sensitive to you know, that kind of thing. So 
It's kind of sad, but unfortunately that's the reality. If you, don't, if you don't live in California, maybe you don't know, but we're having so many wildfires. Oh. That was a bite. Popped up the downrigger. I think I had a bite. So anyways, what I was saying is the air quality up here is not great from all the wildfires that we're having here in California. So if you're not from California, maybe you don't know about it, but we have all these fires. I guess it's mostly northern California, but all over from like the coastline all the way to the Nevada border. Just burning all the place. It's really bad for the air. Kind of sad to see all the forests get burned down. And then also, when I was coming up here, I wanted to get some night crawlers used for bait, and none of the bait shops had night crawlers because of the wildfire. So, kind of affecting a lot of things around here. All right, yeah, just as I suspected. Look at that meat in there, nice and orange. Trout or salmon or anything, it really pretty much the orangier the better. Except in the store they use like this artificial coloring. The farm raised salmon that you buy in the store, which is why I never buy those. But um, anyway, it's a different topic. But that's nice and orange, so that should cook up really nicely. Sun's about to go down, so I'm gonna go ahead and I got a little bit of a ride back to the uh, back to the boat ramp. So I journeyed way the heck out here looking for this fish, which I found. But now we got a little bit of a ride back. So I gotta go do that, and uh, I'll show you this place we're staying in. It's a, a little bit interesting. I booked an Airbnb, but it's not your traditional Airbnb. And uh, you'll see what I mean when I get there. Well, we made it. And, uh, well, at least I think we made it. So normally when you book an Airbnb, they send you like the check-in information, like how to get into the place, like lockbox code or whatever, check-in time. This this place didn't send me anything. So I'm not really 100% sure that I'm at the right place, but we're gonna go find out right now. And I'm guessing the door's just gonna be open. I don't know, we'll go find out. Like the Hilton. All right. Hopefully, there's no one in here. Oh, it's locked. Well, that's not it. I feel like this is the place, but how do I get in? Okay. Well, maybe sleeping in the car tonight. Okay, update. I messaged him uh, through the Airbnb app and he responded really quickly. He said it was supposed to be unlocked, but it's definitely not. So I'm not sure if he's coming to unlock it or what, but I'm in the middle of a dark forest, sitting in my Corolla. Who knows what's out there, but uh, hopefully this guy's legit. All right, he said the key is supposed to be here in an envelope. Oh, here we go. We're in. All right, let's try this again. Back at our hometown. All right, let's see what they got for the key here. Please work. Oh, it worked. All right, guys, we're living large today. Welcome to my humble abode. We got a light here. Where's the switch? Oh, it's right here. Bang. We got one bed here, one bed here, one bed here, and one bed here. And that's it. I'm standing in the middle. That's it, four walls. Nothing fancy today. We're just gonna 
have a place to rest. I mean, that's basically what this is. You guys seem to like the last video where I slept in my Corolla. So I thought I'd step it up one notch or maybe half a notch. And this time we'll sleep in this little cardboard box here. Long day, but at least we caught one. And um, I did a little exploring. I think I have a little game plan for tomorrow morning. So I think we're gonna get on in the morning. But uh, anyways, got my kayak battery charging right there. Plug in my camera stuff, my phone here, and uh, get some rest. Every time I go up into the mountains like this, I get, I think it's altitude sickness. So I just got a really big headache. And I think it's because I just lived my whole life basically at sea level. So every time I come up here, at least the first day, I have this big headache. Anyways, we'll get some rest and I'll show you guys a little bit more of this place, at least from the outside in the morning. I mean, there's not much to see, but you, know, you can see what we're working with at least. All right guys, here's where we slept last night. My humble abode. It was actually pretty nice. And um, obviously there's four beds, so you could sleep four people in here, but just me by myself, it was quite the roomy experience. But I did make one critical error. So I thought this place came with bedding, um, you know, sheets and stuff like that, but it doesn't. And actually it was okay when I first got here. I think it was still like 70 degrees when I went to bed, but in the middle of the night, man, it really got cold. And now it's pretty cold too. I'd say it's probably maybe 50 now. And overnight it was even colder. So uh, it got quite chilly. I had to bust out my ski jacket, got full pants, socks and everything. In the middle of the night, I had to make a last minute adjustment, which still wasn't ideal, but we got some sleep. It wasn't too bad. All right guys, so I just looked up the temperature here. It's actually 45 right now, which means I think last night it was probably in the, maybe even the 30s or really low 40s. Oh, no wonder I was freezing in there. All right, Hilton, it's been real, but we gotta go catch some fish now. All right, back out here. Day number two, Let's see if I can find some fish. So yesterday I trolled the uh, west side of the lake. Today I'm going to try trolling the east side of the lake and I already saw like, right here actually one just jumped and I saw a couple other fish jump around me so there's definitely some fish here. Um, I'm going to drop my line in now and see what we got here. So on this rod I'm going to put that same fire tiger lure that I caught my one fish on yesterday. That seemed to be the best lure for me. And then on my other rod I'm gonna put, uh, let's try this one. Let's try this lure right here. This is a Thomas Boyan. It's basically a little spoon. Um, one of the guys I talked to back at the dock yesterday actually said he was catching them on this lure. So we'll try that on this lure, or on this, this rod, this rod. You guys saw that jump, but the boat behind me here just caught one. Or hooked one. Let me get in front of that. But just jumped right here. Any luck? Not too. How Not deep? Too. Nothing yet. How how deep are you guys getting them? I'm barely underneath the surface. Okay. Nice. Did you caught anything? Or? No, not yet. We're hitting red. Red? All right. Sounds good. Thank you. So I don't know if you heard that guy, but that's the guy that caught one earlier. Yeah, we saw him bring him in, and uh, he said he's getting him right on the surface. So I'm gonna bring my downrigger up, and then I'm actually top lining the other one. So this one should be in a good spot. But um, yeah, we'll try fishing a little bit shallower here. I, like I said earlier, I'm also seeing some fish jump. Like one just jumped right there. Um, so 
Makes sense. I think the fish are near the surface. Just gotta figure out what they're biting. There we go. There we go. There's a fish. There we go. I think there's a fish. It hit like a fish. Not really head shaking or anything though. He's just coming in. Finally. Man, it's been a grind out here. Oh yeah, this is good. It's been a grind out here. I mean, I've been out here since, I think, three hours now. Trolling for three hours at least. And uh, I've been really working hard to try and figure these fish out. But, I mean, hopefully, the idea between this behind this place is what I, when I get one, it should be a good one. But, um, yeah, it's not like wide open bite. There it goes. Now it's fighting a little bit. Finally, man, I've been working this area for so long. Back, forth, back, forth. Let's see what we're working with here. I was just about to give up on this spot too. I was thinking, man, I at least caught one on the west side of the lake yesterday, so I know there's something over there. This side has been testing my patience. But I did see one boat catch one, so I mean, I know there's at least some fish over here. But as far as hooking one myself, man, I was starting to doubt it. But this is my lightest rod that I own, my super ultra light, my ultra ultra light, I like to call it. Feeling like it's a heavy fish. I feel like it might be hooked a little funny, but I'm not really sure. Staying down now. Oh, oh no, that's a good one. A nice fish. Oh, there he goes. Man. I saw color once, but then he took off and went on it. There he goes. Now he's like. Doesn't want to come near the boat. Oh yeah. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a nice looking trout. So here we go, here's that fish. Nice little rainbow trout here. And uh, like I was saying before, I mean the idea behind this place is when I get one, even if it's only one per day or a couple per day, the ones that I'm getting should be nice quality fish. So look at that, all the fins, nice and healthy. Put up a really good fight, especially on light tackle. And uh, yeah, just like that last one that I filleted up yesterday, I'm pretty sure this one's gonna have nice orange meat. These are nice and healthy, healthy fish up here. And I, I'm not 100% sure if they stock them or not, but um, even if they do, do stock them, I think they live in the lake for a long time. So um, you hear a lot of people will refer to some of the trout in the Bay Area Lakes as holdover trout. So what those trout are is they were stocked the previous year and then they survived the whole season and then over the summer and then the next summer or the next winter when you catch them, they're a little bit better looking because they lived in that lake for so long. That's basically what this is. I mean, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but if they do stock them, they do stock them smaller and then they live in here a lot longer than in our Bay Area lakes. So anyways, nice fish. Happy to get on the board finally. And uh, we might have figured something out. I got that one on the top line. And actually look at this lure that I caught on. So that's called a Tasmanian Devil. 
It's a weird looking lure. I've never used it before. Well, actually I tried it once before. I didn't catch anything. Um, but uh, this guy that I went past earlier said he was catching them on red. The color red. And uh, this might be more like orange. But it was the closest thing I had. So I just tossed it in. And I mean it worked. It has like a nice darting action. Like side to side. So I don't know. Whatever, whatever it is that trout hit it. So we're going to get this one back in and see if we can find ourselves another one. There's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. Other rod, other rod, of course. Dude, I just put this one down to this lure. I just changed it to this lure. Might have found the hot lure here. Literally, I don't even think it was down for five minutes. It's been about an hour and a half since the last fish, but I'm really excited for this one because, like I said, I've been switching out lures, trying different stuff. This is a really good one. Oh, this one's running. Feels like a good fish. So both fish today, I've had the camera on one rod, and then the other rod has gotten bit. For some reason with trout, it always seems to happen to me. I don't really know why. Another good looking fish though. Probably, oh, maybe about the same size as the first one. I'm gonna release this one, so I'll just give you a quick look there. Another nice rainbow trout. You can see how it's got all the skull fins and everything. Just really nice looking fish out here. Trout are a really fragile fish, so you don't want to keep them out of the water for too long. Just give them a quick release here. Make sure you get rid of the pliers. go. I'm off strong. Nice thing about these mountain lakes is with the water being a little bit colder, the fish are a little bit stronger. So I mean they're still fragile fish so you don't want to bring them out of the water too long but they're definitely stronger up here. They'll be a little more hardy than your average stocked trout. Like I was saying a little bit different lure. This is a fire tiger spoon. So I was using some other colors. Um, I caught one on a fire tiger Rapala yesterday. Um, this is a Thomas Boyant. Just a little spoon. It's got the chartreuse back. That's why I put this one on. I feel like it was going to be a little more visible down there. But um, yeah, I put this one on. Within five minutes, it got got slammed. So I'm going to circle back around and see if it was a fluke or see if this is the hot water. We're 0 for 2 so far with camera strikes. Actually, I think the one I got yesterday was on camera. So I guess one for three. Look at that. Every time, the other rod. Every time. Every time. Keep going, maybe we'll get a double. Wouldn't that be funny if we got a double? Because now my sound now pointing the camera at this rod, so again, we wouldn't see the strike. Come on in. Come on in. Oh. Did I see a flash there? thing about these light rods they really absorb all those head shakes those trout make just like salmon it's 
fish a nice looking fish. All right, we're gonna keep this one. All right, guys, I think we're gonna troll our way back to the ramp here, but let me just give you a more view of our two nice rainbow trout for the day. First one right here, a little bigger, second one a little bit smaller, but definitely fatter. Probably been eating well down there, and uh, man, you can't really beat the look on these fish. I mean, full tails, full fins, just really nice rainbow trout, which is why we come up here. And it was grind, we had to figure it out. Like I said, I haven't been here in like, let me think. I think the last time I came here was, uh, I think I was, it was 19 years ago. So 19 or 20, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been here. So uh, it was nice to get back here, fun to kind of figure out these fish again. And uh, let me know if you like this video, I'd be happy to come back. I mean, right now it's still kind of early in the season. Um, definitely once it cools down a bit, I think these fish are going to really start picking up and you'll be able to catch a few more, maybe some bigger ones. There's definitely bigger fish in here. I didn't get any big ones this, on this trip, but I know there's bigger fish in here. So we've got a lay of the land. I think I'll have a better chance at the next trip. So anyways, thank you again to Catchco for sponsoring today's video. Like I said before, um, a lot of the gear that I use in this video, all the lures, mine, and stuff like that, most, if not all, you can find on their website. So check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. But yeah, fun trip. We got a long drive back home, but that's okay. It's fun to get out here. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. On my way back to the dock.